Now, I'm sharing with you today some concepts and some ideas as we come into the Christmas period. Now, the truth is, is that this information is valuable for any period of time, especially in the post-pandemic period where we are having lots of viruses circulating. So I am sharing with you my personal strategy. And you can use the concepts for yourself, but with the understanding that I am not telling you what to do. That's the disclaimer here, because some people have quite specific conditions, but the principles I'm talking about are quite general. And so therefore they are likely to apply to most people, but for some people on specific medication, it could be relevant that they have to check with their doctor. But here is my first part and I'm showing, I'm going to do my best to take you through the days of Christmas. So this is my 11 days to Christmas health. And it's how I approach the Christmas period in a strategic way, rather than just simply hoping for the best. So what you have to take into consideration is that this Christmas and New Year is likely to be a super spreader event, like what we have never seen before. Even in the UK, the influenza numbers are rising rapidly. There's a lot of concern. Similar thing is happening in Canada. It's similar thing happened in Asia. So you can expect that this is going to be a problem. I'll give you some insight as to why as we go through but I will share with you one of the strategies that I use. And if you stay tuned over the next 11 days, I hope to be sharing at least one a day. So the first thing, again, from basics, this is COVID, the coronavirus structure. It's like a ball with multiple um, spike proteins on top. Each one has three receptor binding domains. So if there are 25, there'll be 75 receptor binding domains on uh, in total with the spike protein. Everything is about the spike protein. But always remember that there are other proteins that normally the immune system would target, the nuclear capsid, membrane, envelope, the viral genome, especially the ORF, open reading frame proteins. And this is one of the things that differentiates natural immunity from spike induced immunity and so this is part of the reason we have a problem and so one has to be aware that this challenge is in place now everything that you do it's it's a simple concept you don't want that virus to get into your systemic circulation and this is what happens when they looked at injectable spike. When they injected it, it literally spread everywhere. Brain, heart, kidneys, intestines, blood vessels. You do not want the virus and the viral spike proteins circulating around in the bloodstream. And in order to keep healthy, that is simply your target. So the premise or the, um, the principle that you have to understand is that your immune system is divided into sections. You have mucosal immunity in the upper airways. Your skin is also an immune organ. Your gut intestine is also an immune organ. So even in terms of the organs, sexual organs, the vagina has a specific layer that is also got its own immune function. And this is how the body works. And then inside the bloodstream, you have the systemic immunity. And that was what was stimulated by vaccines, not the mucosal immunity. What I'm talking about today is that important point about the mucosal immunity. Remember, we're always being exposed to viruses and bacteria, but this lining, the mucosal lining in the upper airway is usually very sophisticated. It blocks the infections at source. And so I usually describe it as the castle and the castle wall and the moat around the castle wall. You want to be fighting the enemy outside the castle with your archers on the wall, throwing things at them outside. You don't want them breaking through the gate, getting inside the castle and fighting you man to man. 
because it's harder to shoot them with your archers because you may injure your own soldiers. It's much easier when they're on the other side of the castle wall to target them in multiple ways. So the premise is your upper airway mucosal immunity is the wall. You want that wall to try and prevent the virus from getting in to the systemic circulation in the lymph nodes and the blood vessels, okay? So this is my premise, is that I want to protect my mucosal immunity. This is where I'm concentrated. And you have to also remember that the Omicron virus has a predilection for infecting the, si the sinuses seven to 10 times more than say the Delta variant. And this is part of the reason why it remains hidden and part of the reason why people's symptoms are so subtle. And once it gets into these sinuses in the facial region, this is the maxillary sinuses, the ethmoid sinuses, the frontal sinus. Once it gets in there and it starts replicating, these people will have just mild persistent symptoms and they can't really get rid of it so easily. And so part of what you're doing is protecting your sinuses because that's where the virus can sit and hide. They're like little caves that they can hide in. And your mucosal immunity is very, very sophisticated. It is not simply just a lining. When you look carefully at it, you will see that in order for a virus to break through, it has to get through the mucus, it has to get through the cilia sweeping it away, and inside there is IgA antibodies that will bind it and prevent it, and they have also little uh, antimicrobial, antiviral agents in there. So the body is fighting against these things all the time. But even if these viruses break into one of these cells and infects them, it still hasn't gotten through the mucosal layer because beyond the physical barrier, you have an immune barrier composed of multiple different side, uh, kinds of immune cells a very sophisticated thing. And so everything that you are thinking about is that you want this layer because you can't always prevent an infection. If somebody coughs on you, the virus will get into your mucosal immunity. What you want is you want the mucosal immunity to therefore deal with it before it breaks into your systemic immune system. Because once that bullet starts bouncing around, Inside the barrier within your body, it can do lots of damage. So with that in mind, you have to remember that in the context of your 11 days of Christmas, coming up to the Christmas period, your most important signal is going to be about interferon. Okay? And so this is a critical point because a lot of people don't understand how important this is. Interferon is the alarm system. It's like the fire alarm. When a fire goes off in one apartment, suddenly the whole building is alerted with the flashing lights, uh, the alarm goes off, people know to move out whilst the fire engines can come and address it. So interferon is the early warning system. And this is what is being deactivated by COVID. And so this is why I'm explaining that there's a very close connection between what is happening with COVID and the surge of a lot of other infections. This is the point that a lot of people are missing. So here you have what happens normally. The virus will infect a cell. Let's, let's assume this is one of the mucosal immune cells. As soon as it infects it, that cell produces interferon. The interferon then goes to neighboring cells to warn them, goodness, there's a virus around. So they put up barriers. It signals the cells that are infected to die so that the virus can't replicate anymore. And it calls in the backup so that the immune system is ready. When I think about it in the context of, uh, say, a prison, you have lots of security. You have walls. You have then inside the walls, you have gates. You have security guards with lights. You have the alarm system. If something was wrong, 
you have a central point where somebody is observing all the cameras and they have a telephone line that if there is a problem, they can reach out to uh, the help from outside who will come in. What happens with SARS-CoV-2 is that it is a beast of controlling and addressing these issues. It has all kinds of tricks. So it switches off the lights. It distracts the guards. It puts a hole in the fence. It switches off the alarm. It turns off the computer screens for the guard looking at them. And it also cuts the phone line. This now means they are wide open, either for people getting in or people getting out. And this is the system that is so critical in the context of what is happening. This is an image of what happens with regards to interferon suppression with SARS-CoV-2. Wherever you see a red box is where it's blocking something. And I'll show you a slightly bigger picture here. This is what happens. The viral DNA comes in, or RNA. It triggers normally these proteins. They pick them up and they signal they through these signals to then go into the nucleus, produce interferon beta, which then goes and triggers an interferon response. But if you look carefully at what happened, the SARS-CoV-2 different um, proteins in it blocks each phase of this so that the signals can't get through. Remember this, this is not one. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different strategies just to block this interferon signal. This is extremely important because this is why so few people have symptoms, even though they have an infection and they have no idea why they're getting sick because they had an infection and the infection was so subtle that they didn't realize that this was a problem. This is where we are in the context of what is happening today, because I suspect that what is causing the flu surge is the fact that the virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, has disabled the interferon defense, opening the door for other viruses. Because you have to remember, this mechanism is not unique to SARS-CoV-2. It's unique for every single viral infection. It uses this strategy to prevent ongoing infection. When you have all of these blocked, not just will the SARS-CoV-2 get through, but also will all other viruses and some bacteria. This is where we are. So. With regards to, therefore, my suggestion, my strategy, a critical part of it is my combination of vitamin C and zinc. So simple thing. And in my situation, uh, recently, if I went to a party and I felt as though, hmm, I, I suspect this was a high exposure situation, maybe I'm feeling those tiny signals that don't feel right. I wonder if I'm starting to come down with something even within a few hours, then I would take my vitamin C with zinc, whatever is the appropriate dose for you. This is just simple, good quality supplements, wherever you may find them. And this is the science as to what happens. Here is why the science, and this is only to do with interferon I'm talking about. There are multiple other benefits, but in the context of interferon, the vitamin C will protect the platform, the MAVS. It will protect the IRF3 and IRF7. So these signals will still be able to go through the nucleus. The zinc also protects up here, Rig1, MDA5, and also protects dually IRF3 and IRF7. So suddenly it's much more difficult for the virus to suppress them. And once the signal gets through, once the alarm has been put through, it's not that you don't have an infection, it's that you have a truncated infection. Very quickly, the infected cells are targeted and killed. The virus can't infect easily other cells. Your immune system kicks in, and maybe you felt a bit unwell for a few hours, and then hopefully, 
you are fine. Because when you look at the strategy that happens with regards to viral entry and exit, this is how it works. Once the virus binds to the cilia and it goes down, gets into the cell, that's about six hours. Within 24 hours, it has already infected the cell. It's growing the microvilli to produce tree-like. It hasn't yet started to spread, but by 48 hours, suddenly it's spreading a huge amount. I mean, massive amount of viral particles. And in some cases, what they're anticipating is that the Omicron, part of the reason why it's so transmissible is because it is producing far more viral particles than the other variants before it. This is a problem. And this is where we are at the moment. With this situation, you can expect that immune defenses are down broadly across the population, not everyone, but enough people that they not only don't know that they had a recent SARS-CoV-2 infection or have a persistent one, they then have on top of it influenza and mycoplasma, maybe streptococcus, because their immune system is blunted with regards to interferon. So you have to therefore strengthen that immune system and reduce your exposure this Christmas period. It's not easy. And even though I know all these things, it doesn't mean that by implementing all the strategies, it means that I will therefore be fine myself. That's the hope and that's the strategy. But you certainly have to be strategic about it. But just remember, as a final thought, everything you do is about preventing the virus getting into the systemic circulation. You don't want that. Because once it starts infecting and bouncing around, it will trigger huge immune responses that also sometimes are silent, but present with disease down the line. A few weeks, people come with all kinds of strange things going on. They didn't even realize they had an infection early on. There's a long road to go, but this is some of the science. And as I said, you have to be aware of what it is that is days and weeks I'm hoping to be protected have a good evening A hero, an immune adventure. Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.